Anthony J. Kircher was born on September 1, 1980, in Monroe, Washington. He was a popular and talented teenager who played both football and basketball at Monroe High School. His talent could be traced to his mother, who even won a university scholarship playing football. Kircher was voted captain countless times in his football and basketball teams. Being a talented player, he broke many records in football and received several honors and awards. Kircher would later go on to play football at his father's alma mater, the University of Idaho, making his father proud. During one of his practices, Kircher tore his anterior cruciate ligament, ending his promising college football career. Kircher quickly became addicted to the painkiller Vicodin. He became dangerously depressed and even injured himself intentionally by kicking an oak coffee table repeatedly to obtain more pills. With the support of his family, Curcio entered a drug alcohol treatment facility. On completing a 21-day inpatient program, Curcio became sober. He started his first business called Tony's Gaming, which bought and sold casino tables and other gaming merchandise. Curcio began to expand his business by leasing commercial space and adjacent storage. But within a few months of being open to the public, Tony's Gaming was unexpectedly shot down by the Washington State Gambling Commission after a police raid because Curcio did not possess the proper permits. Curcio later found out that the raid was due to influence from a real estate broker who had a financial interest in a local casino. He tried to get legal representation but was denied services by local attorneys who were already debriefed by the real estate broker. With so many bills to pay and daunting family expectations, Curcio fell back to forging prescriptions on his computer. As a way of retaliation, Curcio and several of his associates broke into his businesses and removed computers, files, and documents from the offices he owned. Curcio had married his school sweetheart and cheerleader after graduating from school. He maintained a successful business owner front and family man. He was living a double life. His addiction kept increasing. So did his involvement in illegal activities. By the time he was in his mid-twenties, he had already organized several high-dollar theft, scams, and loan sharking schemes, and was also behind a sports memorabilia counterfeiting ring. Even after completing four drug and alcohol treatment programs, Curcio was spending nearly $15,000 a month on his increasing drug habit, which now also included cocaine and benzodiazepines. Seeing opportunity in real estate, Curcio invested there and was able to maintain his successful business front while spending on his prescriptions. In 2008, the real estate investment business took a heavy downturn when the economy collapsed, leaving him with several homes on the verge of foreclosure and vehicles near repossessions among other outstanding personal debt. With everything falling apart, including the desperate need to keep his prescriptions coming, Curcio hatched the idea to rob a Brinks armored car. Crucio closely watched a Brinks armored car make its deliveries to the Bank of America branch in Monroe, Washington for three months. He took notes of the schedule, diagrammed locations of the bank's cameras, noting the armored car's blind spots. He even predicted how much money was being transferred to the banks and how much was being removed via ATMs. He deliberated on the police routine protocol in responding to robberies and the location of the bank and decided on using a local creek to escape. After several failed practice attempts to escape using a jet ski, he resorted to creating a cable pulley system to quickly pull himself a large bags of cash upstream in the creek using a connected canvas wrapped in a tube. Crucio's preparation climaxed with an advertisement he placed on Craigslist a few days before the robbery for 15 to 20 workers for a fictitious city cleanup project, promising $28.50 an hour. The dress code of the laborers was jeans, a blue shirt, work shoes, and a yellow safety vest. The ad also added a few types of equipment to be brought by the applicants, like safety goggles and a painter's mask. The applicants were to meet in the Bank of America parking lot at the exact time Curcio planned to rob the armored car. On September 30, 2008, Curcio dressed identically to his decoy applicants, carried out the bank heist. He pepper sprayed the Brinks armored car guard who was 
pushing a dolly loaded with money into the bank, which caused the guard to let go of the money. Crucio grabbed two bags of money containing more than $400,000 and ran toward the creek. Meanwhile, police arrived to find the bank's parking lot filled with Crucio's decoy applicants wearing the outfit matching the robber's description. At the water's edge, Crucio immediately got away by pulling himself down the creek with the cables he had previously strung. He exited the creek at a business building opposite the rob bank and removed his outfit, revealing a different outfit and got away in a waiting accomplice car. Crucio's bank heist gained national attention. He quickly gained notoriety and was referred to as the Craigslist robber and D.B. Tuber after the 1970s hijacker D.B. Cooper. Kurshio's doom came a month later when a homeless man reported to police that several weeks before the robbery, he had seen a man drive up to the Bank of America parking lot and receive a disguise from behind a trash bin. The homeless man even wrote down the license number of the car which he handed over to the police. The FBI launched surveillance on Crucio as a suspect in the robbery. Immediately, he returned to Las Vegas. His DNA was retrieved by local authorities from a drink bottle that Crucio disposed of at a gas station with a sample of DNA and compared it to the DNA from the face mask and wig discarded at a short distance from the scene of the robbery. The two DNA samples matched and Crucio was later arrested in Lake Stevens, Washington, getting out of a luxury SUV with $17,000 in cash. While being housed at FCIA Latuna, Curcio became close with fellow inmate George Jung, who encouraged him to write a book. Jung put him in touch with author biographer Dane Batty, and the two soon began a correspondence. During this time, Curcio was a victim of numerous accusations and beatings. He spent most of his time in solitary confinement, and upon his release, he wrote the book Heist and High promising to prevent others from making the same decisions he made. Throughout his sentence, Curcio authored and illustrated over 20 children's books, including one aimed at the children of incarcerated parents titled My Daddy's in Jail. Upon finishing his incarceration at USP Coleman in Florida and completing a drug treatment program, Curcio was released from custody in April 2013 and returned to Seattle area. He reunited with his wife and two daughters and since has been working with youth, giving talks and presentations on drug abuse, prevention and the importance of positive choices. He is now a public speaker. He travels all over the US speaking to middle schools, high schools and universities across. Kurcio has been featured on several media platforms using his story to increase awareness of drug addiction and prevention. His book, Heist and High, published on June 21, 2013, has been the recipient of several awards. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other interesting videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.